As you might expect, purchasing follows similar workflows to those in order entry or inventory management. It also has some unique aspects to help you maintain spending control across your organization. Okay, so in our automation demo, we're gonna go over to purchasing. So I go to the main module or the main menu for all my modules here and I click purchasing. And I'm gonna go down to this map here. First of all, let me show you a little bit about this purchasing map. So we've glanced at this in a couple of applications so far. But what we've got here is, this is the application map or the overview for the application for purchasing. And we still have this slide out on the left, it can get us to anything that we need. We can create favorites again of anything here. So I can go ahead and maybe I do a lot of um, purchase orders. I can create that as a favorite. And now when I click favorites, it shows up. So I can create a shorter list under favorites. Or I can go to all on this slide out menu. I can also go to this main map here, click any of these, I can get to a list of vendors, warehouses, product lines, items, or price lists. And the main area we're gonna work in is tasks. Notice I have create purchase requisition. And as I roll over that, there's just a little triangle here. It gives me two different purchase requisition documents that I've created. Because you can define your own transaction documents, you can have multiple transaction documents under any one of these categories. So a requisition doesn't actually hit the general ledger, right? It's just going to be a request for a purchase. And then a purchase order is a statement that we've made the decision to purchase this thing. And then we'll receive a shipment and then we'll create a vendor invoice, which then flows over to the general ledger into accounts payable and really works into our financials. We also have the ability to approve purchasing transactions here. If we needed to, if we had transactions that applied to, we could split and merge transactions. This is if we had uh, multiple transactions to the same vendor or we have line items we need to split off something with multiple line items this would be available and this is where we would print an email and uh, maybe return a shipment and then we can get look at our reports in this lower section this is also all available on the side here when we click any one of these we are choosing to create a new record of that type if we just want to see the list of records we would go over to the list here and click the name of the list rather than the plus symbol to see the list of those records. I'm gonna start this off by actually moving over to Drew Jackson's login. Remember, he's an employee and he has the ability to create a purchase requisition. Notice these other things, purchase order, receivers, and invoices are all grayed out for Drew. He doesn't work with those. What he works with is purchasing requisitions. So we'll go ahead and click Purchasing Requisition to create a new Purchasing Requisition. And Drew's gonna go ahead and he's gonna requisition some medical supplies. So we're gonna go down here to our Medical Supply USA. And we are going to choose some items here. Let's go ahead and get some of these uh, heart monitor leads. And we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna get 10 of these. And so we've got this uh, invoice, this purchase requisition here now for 4350. I could go ahead and create attachments. Maybe I have a picture of that item I could put in here, or I have a quote from a vendor. They've already told me this is how much it costs. I'm gonna go ahead and attach that PDF here as proof of that, uh, that cost. And I'm gonna go ahead and I could create a message here, you know, um, something about these items. If I had a document from the vendor, I might put that in here. If the vendor had given me that, that quote, I might put that quote number in here. So it would help track that with the vendor. Or if later on this, this number becomes important if they've already, if they bill me for something. When I receive it, I can add that document number in here to track their bill as well. Notice how when I chose the vendor, everything was automatically loaded in, my requested buy and ship to. And we'll go ahead and um, submit this. I didn't provide a location. You remember that we've got two locations that Drew could be working in. And in this case, we need to know where this thing's going to. And so we've made on this transaction document, we've said that location is required. It's a good time for me to show that each line item has additional fields underneath it in this dropdown. 
I can go ahead and edit this line item and move these fields in line. So I might want to move location in line since I've got it required, make it and make it much easier to select during the process. I can also select any of these other dimensions. Maybe I assign this to a particular patient if I had a, some kind of a pass through cost going on here. If I've ordered something directly for a patient, perhaps I choose a product line or a particular employee. Notice this is user defined dimension. We've given a generic name. I could name it anything I want, but I've created a user defined dimension. I mean, you can create more than the standard dimensions. You can create as many as you need and have them within your company. And you can slice and dice and filter information by those dimensions that you've defined. In this case, we need to assign a location. And I'm going to go ahead and sign one of these locations. He's allowed to work. He works in San Francisco, New York. Wow, he's busy. I'm going to choose New York as my location for this purchase requisition. I'm going to hide those details. So now I have this line item. And I'm going to click Submit. So now we're back to this main purchasing menu. If Drew had the ability to convert this requisition, it might take him to a list of those requisitions. But because he doesn't, it's just going to take him right back to this home purchasing page where he might put in another purchase requisition. I'm going to jump back over to my, my own login, where I'm a business user. And in purchasing here, I have this purchasing approve transact approve purchasing transactions button. When I go in there, I see that here's this transaction that Drew just put in, purchase requisition 58 for medical supplies for 4350. And I can approve that from here. At this point, I've also received an email that tells me this requisition is waiting. So I could click on that and it would take me to the system and I could approve it. I could also pull that up on a mobile device. So I could look at this on my phone or tablet and there's an approvals menu there where I can approve transactions remotely on my phone or tablet. And so we aren't playing chase down the manager anymore. Um, I could also have a, an item on my dashboard that showed things waiting for approval. I could have a component that showed approvals, uh, items waiting for my approval. And this could be transactions that I need to approve. Maybe I need to approve expense reports. Any of these kinds of things that I need to approve would show up on my phone or my tablet in my email box, letting me know uh, what I need to do and, and keeping this process moving in an automated way. So we're not manually creating these approval lists and running around finding managers to get signatures. We're simply going through and approving these. So I'm going to go ahead and click approve on Drew's purchase requisition. And I could leave a comment at this time. So I approve this. Now, when I go over to purchase requisitions, I can see that this is here waiting. This is the same one, number 58. I can go ahead and convert this now to a purchase order. So when I click convert, I get this little drop down, this little menu that pops up next to convert. I'm going to choose purchase order. So now all the information from the original purchase requisition is moved over to this purchase order and it's here waiting. I can add more information about it. I can choose shipping, how I want this shipped. Maybe I have another attachment I want to add. I can do this at this time. And we can go ahead and create this purchase order. I'm going to go ahead and post this. And it takes me to my list of purchase orders. This is again, purchase order now number 58. It was PR, purchase requisition 58. Now it's PO 58. It's for that same amount. And let's say a few days have gone by. This has shown up in our receiving. And at this point, I could choose to a receiver for physical goods. If it was non-physical goods, I could simply choose to create a vendor invoice straight from the PO. I'm gonna choose receiver. And we see that this has come in and we have our um, receivers double check that this quantity is received. Um, they may attach something. Maybe they attach a PDF of the vendor invoice that the vendor has sent with this at this time, or maybe it's the shipping statement that has come in. They can attach to the document. Maybe they have a vendor document number at this point and they can go ahead and post that document number here so we can track that with this receiver 
I'm going to go ahead and post this receiver. So now we know within the accounting system that we have this request. We created a purchase order. We sent it to the vendor. The vendor has sent us the information. And now I have this posted receiver from Medical Supply Company. And I can go ahead and convert that to the only thing that's left, which is vendor invoice. I'm going to click vendor invoice. And now I'm going to create a vendor invoice. This is where we, we hit the GL. And again, everything is brought over as needed. The terms are set here. That's important that I know those. Um, again, I can create another attachment if I need to. I can see that everything's as it was. I can go back and double check any paperwork around this. And I go ahead and post this invoice. And as I post this, post this invoice, it's going to do a couple of things. It's going to hit the general ledger. It's going to hit accounts payable. It's going to hit my accounts payable journal. And now in accounts payable, if I go to bills, I have this new bill right here for 4350. And there's that bill number from the vendor that's following this um, item. And I can go ahead and pay this invoice from here in accounts payable. Um, I can also see this in my vendor invoices. And I can process this from here as well. I can go back to any of these if I want to look these up. If a vendor calls me and says I need something, I need to check on an invoice, I can go back and view an old invoice. And I have all the information about what was done, if you know when the transaction came in. I also have a history. I can see all the documents that were created to get to that vendor invoice. And I can see any payment details. I can see that there was a check cut for this invoice for $100. And I can give that information. I even have the document number to give that to the vendor when they call. And so I have all this information and all this automation and everything stored. So I'm not um, running around the office, pulling out files, looking for things, um, opening different QuickBooks files maybe to track down these things. They're all in one place. I can even get to this information from the vendor themselves, the vendor record. I can pull up the vendor record and see their past transactions. What we've done is we've really automated the process. We can also automate approvals in the same way with time and expenses. The way we've created these is with uh, approval rules. Let me go ahead and show you that as we go into setup. I have approval policies. Let me go ahead and click the list of approval policies. I only have one defined for my purchasing requisition in this company. That's the rule we used. And if we go to the edit for that rule, it's we give it a name and then we set some rules. So we can set multiple rules. I've set a value approval rule. And if I want to go look at what that is, it says that um, it needs a level one approver. So there's different levels we give to people within the company, to users. We give them different levels of approval. I need a level one approver for anything between $500 and $1,000. Level two for $1,000 to $2,500. And over $2,500, I need a level three approval. And so that's a really simple approval. I could set this to mean to, to require uh, multiple approvers. I could set it to department approvals. I have a lot of different ways I could set the approvals. Now this, I've created a value approval, but as you can see, I've got department approvals, transaction department approvals, um, individual approvals. So I could set an approval rule for something just to an individual. Uh, maybe there's certain things at certain levels that I only want my CFO to approve. And I can set that rule. And so you have the ability to set those up. Again, no scripting. It's all done within the finance department. And you can set these policies to really create automation around your um, purchasing and payment processes. As I mentioned, under accounts payable with bills, You can go ahead and select bills to pay. And as you select these bills to pay, you can create different options of how you want to pay them by check, um, charge card, cash, ACH. And there's another way, and because we set this up live, I don't have it in this demo, and that's with paying with checks, ACH, or American Express um, corporate card all through American Express. So rather than printing your own checks, you could send the payment information off to American Express. They would cut and mail the check for you and you know, as we look at cost savings, there's huge cost savings in having those checks outsourced. And because we're going through American Express, you know it's getting done properly. And it charges against your own bank account. So it's not 
getting charged to American Express account. It's your own bank account. You can also use your American Express corporate card, which you can just load into the system. American Express sends the vendor a one-time use number, so there's more security around the card. You're not updating card numbers with vendors. They can only use it for the transaction that it's um, specified for, and it reports back to the general ledger when they've run the payment. And so you have um, instant reporting. Um, you also get all the benefits when you use the American Express card to pay your bills. You get the float, meaning from the time the bill is paid until you have to pay American Express, you have a little bit of a cushion there. You also have the ability to receive any of benefits, any points benefits. We have companies that have actually monetized their AP system and actually making more back than they're paying for their financial system. Essentially, their, their system's paying for itself. And with that, that ends the automation portion of this demonstration. And we'll move back over to our presentation as we move off to integration.